Sarah, there you are. What on earth are you doing here? Everyone wants to congratulate you. What's the matter? Is everything all right? Oh, you must be exhausted. I can remember coming off a stage after performance. Could barely walk. You leave everything on the stage. Mm. It's the best feeling in the world. Have you ever wondered if... What? If it were enough? Enough? <laughs> oh, teacher. Once you get a taste of it, it is never enough. In time, you have better sets, lovelier costumes. No, I mean, have you, have you ever wondered if this is all you could ever do? All you can ever be? Let's go, everyone's waiting for you. Madame McQuaw, I don't think I just wanna be a ballerina. It's, it's just nerves. You're not listening. I can't just give up everything for ballet. Well, no one's asking you th that you had to give up everything, but you will. Maybe not now, maybe not on purpose, maybe not all at once. Listen to me, Sarah. There are hundreds, thousands of girls who would kill to be in your position. And your gift means nothing without hard work, discipline, and yes, sacrifice. But you just have a child's idea of happiness. But in order to be great, you need to let that go. Why? I'll wait for you out in the limo. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. I am very, very excited that you are here. For those who are new to my channel, my name is Tia Joy. Welcome, welcome. And to all of my subscribers, how are you doing, fam? It's so good to see you. Now, we are about to end the Save the Last Dance week with Save the Last Dance 2. Now, before I get into this dance movie review, I need all of you who have not subscribed to my channel yet to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell so you can be in the know when I upload a new video. <laughs> Say the Last Dance 2 came out in 2006 and it was directed by David Petrarca. And this second one is basically the continuation of Sarah. And if you've seen the first one, if you haven't seen my dance movie review, please watch it. I'll have that above. But Sarah had this dream of going to Juilliard. And so with this second one, we are actually seeing her journey at Juilliard. Isabella Miko, she plays as Sarah. So she goes to Juilliard and she, which is her dream school. So when you're in your dream school, it's something that you always wanted. You know, you, you're just excited. You're really ready, you're focused. You're like, I'm here, let's do this. So she ended up running to Miles, who is played by Columbus Short, who is used to be a student, but he still attends the school as like an assistant helper or assistant teacher. And he ends up liking her instantly and thinking that, oh, you must be a trumpet player or play some type of instrument. She's like, nah, I'm a dancer. <laughs> and so them two end up hitting it off. Sarah has, um, Sarah ends up linking up with her roommate, who she ends up being friends with named Zoe. Her name's Aubrey Dollar. And she is into theater. So it's cool to see the different students from Juilliard and what they are there to major in. And Zoe, she's into theater. And she's, like, not dramatic, but she's, She's a theater student. She's very into acting, really like their blood, like straight up to the core person. And she's a, actually a fun character to, uh, to see and watch. And as 
Sarah goes to the school, she ends up having a mentor named Katrina, who is played by who is played by Maria Brooks, and she's a fellow student of Juilliard and helps her get into the feel of what the school is about, what to eat, what not to eat, who to talk to, who not to talk to, what to prepare yourself mentally for as you're in school. But also, she's not just only her mentor, but she's also the girl that she gets. The person that gets a little jealous of Sarah because she see that she got potential so you know how that story goes when you know you got it together you got that talent and you got somebody who you wake up with who gets a little jelly yes that's Katrina and so also Miles he has a friend named France and he's played by Ian Brennan and them two Together, they end up helping the girls, who is Zoe and Sarah, and they introduce them to this club, who is owned by Mix, who played Neo. So it was cool to see Neo up here. So it's like, okay, yeah, I see you, I see you. And so, Sarah, this Sarah character, I can definitely say, is a little bit different from the first one because the Sarah in the first one, she was more like laid back. She was more cool, down to earth very understanding observant of her surrounding this Sarah has a little bit more energy she's like yeah I love hip-hop I love ballet I love boys and I love kissing and and she's just this bubbly person and it's like okay it's like Sarah got upgraded just a little bit so it's like okay so it was very interesting to see her character her it's very interesting to see her play Sarah and so with Sarah here, she's really, really into hip hop. Like she loves ballet. You can see in this movie she's worked hard in ballet, but she also has that love and feel for hip hop too. So Miles take her to this club and she ends up meeting a girl named Candy who's played by Trey Armstrong. And Candy is like the girl who like is the one that people follow, the one that people pick up the move. So if she got something days later, people come back to the club and people will be doing the same thing she's doing she's pretty much a trendsetter that's just what she is and so it's really it's really cool to see this club but I'm gonna get to that just a little bit what the club is at because that is a scene that I will embark on but this this was it was it was a very interesting say the last dance too so not saying that it was a bad thing but it was very interesting to see how Sarah goes through this journey in her being in Juilliard and also the friends that she meet also in this movie it's not really like race intended there's no oh you're a white girl you do this nah I mean Candy had a little bit because it's like okay this chica she's coming up in the circle and she's dancing <laughs> but it wasn't really in that situ in that situation it wasn't really focused on that so I'm gonna get to some of my favorite scenes that I do like in this movie. It's not the scenes that I have. Two of them are dance. One of them is not. So let's get into that. So my first favorite scene that I like is Miles when in his class. So Sarah and Zoe they take this class called Hip Hop Theory, and this is when she sees what Columbus did. Because in the beginning she met him, they were at orientation, but now we get to see what exactly he do. So he was actually subbing for a teacher. So for hip hop theory. I like this scene because I to be by me seeing this scene, I would want to take hip hop theory. I really like how he explained hip hop, but not only that, he had his friend France who's in the room with him and they're playing the music in the background while he's saying, "Hey, what is hip hop? What do you think it is?" and saying this it's it's soul, it's it's feeling, it's 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 movement, it's it's character, it's personality, it's jazz, it's funk. It's it's I like how he explained it. and then he went to the guitar, and then he starts to play the guitar and just pick it up, um, getting to the feel of what music was already playing and just added in more notes and more musicality to the song. And they were just pretty much creating music at the same time while he's teaching. And I really like how how he taught that class and I love how he said the ending what hip-hop really is is I am here which is very true because when you're dancing especially with hip-hop in general you're basically letting people know who you are and how you see life and how you see how you interpret the music and what exactly it means to you but it's also a voice that you're also speaking into as well not just in music and not just in dance but just in life in general so it's really cool to see him explain that so I really love that scene my second favorite scene is the club scene I like the feel of how the club is very very different you see the crowd around and you see the stage right in the center so you see that 
so you see Candy and her up there doing her little thing and it's pretty much the center of attention so it's like you see the floor but also it's like a platform in the middle of the scene of the club so the dancers who are dancing are high and lifted up and I really liked how Miles when he was saying when he was showing Sarah the club scene how they were looking down and he was like people who are dancing they don't even know what kind of movements they're doing they're and each dance that they're doing is like a footprint into something bigger than they don't even know and I just love how he really just explained that hip-hop is it's very traditional it's not just something that is new especially for today but it's it, it speaks volumes it speaks about I guess of, of the foundation where it birthed it, it speaks culture it speaks people it speaks nationality it speaks those who have paved the way in the hip-hop scene and, and how it all came about with because if you know James Brown he by the DJs playing his records and doing their own little funky spin to it it's actually helped birth the, the soul of hip-hop so just seeing the foundation how all that worked around was really really cool to hear and have him explain as they're watching the dancers dancing and saying how every move they make is historical which is true when it comes to hip-hop because you don't know somebody may see your move see you doing hip-hop and they may take it and snatch it and make it something bigger and next thing you know it's a trend so you just never know so I really really love that scene and my last favorite scene is the last dance that they do at the club. I really like that scene because not only do they have hip hop dancers, but I like how they start off with the ballet dancers doing some ballet, then a little bit of some contemporary, then went to the hip hop dancers, and then they add some tap in there. So I just love, nothing brings me more joy to see more than one dance style come together and just enjoying each other's company. And to see this scene, I really, really liked it. it. It was just very fun to see the the blending of all of those dance styles come together. And out of much respect, creating an amazing dance piece. And it just looked really cool to see the transition from the modern dancers to the hip hop and then to them stopping and, and gathering around and having the tap dancers having their moment. It was just really, really cool to see all of that all together. So I really, really loved that last favorite scene. So the lesson I learned in this movie is when you have a dream there is a chance that it will change. Sarah her biggest dream was to be a prima ballerina and now that she went through the steps of what it take to be a ballerina, a prima ballerina she's like I can't like I can't do this by me putting all in all not just only it, it, I don't think it was just the hard work that she had to endure and that was her problem I believe the issue that she had was that I can't have relationships I can't be friends I can't still enjoy my life by going out and getting some coffee going to dinner like it's a strict schedule and not saying that she can't do that but the fact that if she has to lose relationships and she has to pretty much be by herself in order to get to where she really wants to go is it really worth going after that dream because she put in a lot of hard work she practiced a lot she wasn't able to be there for miles like she really wanted to because she had a balance between being a prima ballerina and at, and doing what miles asked her to do as far as being a choreographer for different events that he had going on so he can get so they can have more gigs and more opportunities so to balance that and her friends trying to find that it was hard and she knows that with uh, Mademoiselle, or her name is Monique, who was played by Jacqueline Bissett. She's a ballet instructor, and she saw her potential, loved what she had. She was super hard on her, but he, she also saw the potential. But seeing that she could be the possibly the next ballet, like principal ballet dancer, she's trying to get her focus. Like you shouldn't be hanging out with certain people. You need to be. You need to be focused. You need to be a hundred percent in. You can't have no distractions. You can't be you got to practice 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 and she ha she was on her about that because she she was a ballet dancer and she ended up stopping and due to injury which is something that a ballet dancer ended up happening so they had to stop so um, by Monique she was teaching she was really on her like you got to focus 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 and Sarah's like I, I am focused but do I really 
I can't have fun. I can't be in a relationship with people. Like, I had to give everything up. Like, I don't understand. Like, I want to, I still should be able to enjoy life. And with Katrina, same thing with her. When she hurt her leg, she's, she was depressed. Like, oh my gosh, because that's what she wanted. Her life was over. And she didn't know what else she could do because her whole life was her whole life was ballet and she couldn't imagine herself not doing it she didn't have a plan a a plan b but she was willing to put her whole all into being a prima ballerina versus and also getting picked up by a ballet company versus sarah she's like i i just can't i can't have this be my life i can't just be only ballet this is too much it's a lot of it's 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 a lot to ask a lot to give up for and she wanted ballet because it's something that's fun, so that she absolutely loves. It's it's her passion, her life. But if it has to take sacrifices of other things that are important to her, she wasn't able to go all in. I can understand that. I know for me, I had I had dreams of my own. Like I, when I was like, well, let's see, middle school, high schooler, I wanted to own a dance studio. I did want to start a company and live in life and teach it at a dance studio and being there for a long time and going back to back teaching where I have to add my own break because I have six classes back to back. It was a lot. It was like, okay, I don't think I really want to do the studio thing. I don't want to own a studio. I used to get mad when people come up to me like, oh, so you want to own an dance studio? I'm like, since when did I tell you that? Like, I used to get offended all the time. Like people who fight on a dancer or a teacher, they automatically think, oh, you want to own a dance studio? It's like, when have I said that? But because I spoke that so many times when I was younger, that that's what I want. As I live life, I realize that that's not my dream. That's not what some, this was well, definitely isn't my dream, but it's not something that I want to do because there's more that I feel that I end up encountering and liking way more than to be in a studio and teaching for the rest of my life. I am not doing that and I do not want to own my own company and I have to pretty much exp like tell people like I don't want that like <laughs> I had to change my mindset of my of the dream that I thought I wanted because once I started like doing it or getting the taste of it I didn't like it so that changed but um, now it's like I have I have my dreams changed so it's different so I understand when it comes to you always wanted to do something and you do it and plans change and for Sarah her plan changed she's like I can't <laughs> I can't do this and I'm pretty sure in life as we live we're plans are gonna change but that's not a bad thing it's always for the better because at least we have a taste of something that we thought we wanted and now that we know that there's something else that's deep inside that we want to pursue and do I believe that's important that we know that now than to spend the rest of our lives doing something that we thought that, and, and tolerate something that oh it's a dream like Sarah could easily be like okay I want to keep doing this but she would have been depressed she would have been having anxiety she would feel like she can't do anything but the fact that she quit and she decided to change her the path at an earlier time she's able to be happy and, and still do what she loved but on another level so that was really great but that's all that I learned in this movie if you like this dance movie review hit the like button and also the subscribe and don't forget that bell and before I leave I definitely want to say thank you to all the dancers you all did an amazing job the choreographer in this movie was Rich and Tone which was really cool to see that so the choreographer the choreographer who choreographed the ballet choreography was Roberto Campanella. Amazing job to all the dancers. You guys did a great job. I will definitely list all the dancers a part of this movie in my Dancers Hall of Fame. And th that's it. I hope you all enjoyed the Save the Last Dance Movie Review week. I upload, I upload a new video every Tuesday and Thursday. I'm so excited to see you guys all next time. Also, don't forget to make good choices, and I'll see you all later. Bye!